Hello everyone, this is Theme Park Squib and welcome to another show. We've got a lot of news to get through this week, mainly circling around Halloween as some news has started to come out. Let's get into news. Tweet in news, a lot to get through. First, Zombie Hunt at Thorpe Park has been in more details around that as it does start this Saturday, the 21st of July. It is going to be a family, a family friendly interactive experience. So it's not going to be a real intense scare attraction. So it's going to be a family orientation. I reckon down the arm of celebrity routes where you'll stop at spaces and look in the construction. It does look like there's going to be quite a lot of stopping and not a lot of zombies and you do get the guns. So I reckon it's more going to be a family, I'm a celebrity style attraction. And probably have an age restriction at the age of eight. You have to pre-book your ticket between 10 and 12 and it costs £1.50, which is alright for £1.50 if it was like 8 quid or something. No, that's just annoying. Not like Alton Towers Scarefest with all the most expense paid and containment at Fort Park, which is £4. That's not too bad, but when you've got the other three majors, you don't really want to pay for that one, do you, really? And sadly, it's paid but luckily it looks really good and luckily it's cheap as well not like 15 pound to get in like some of these places abroad and all that which is just ridiculous and chesington have announced their halloween lineup crazy to be talking about halloween already halloween at chesington is the exact same lineup as last year which is perfect i think it's a really good lineup for Halloween, so the Room and the Broom show, which was new for last year, will come back into the Pandemonium Arena, or the Pandemonium stage. The Gruffalo Arena will have um, just Halloween and the Fancy Dress competition takes place on there. And the Maze is Trick or Treat Wood will be returning at its usual location. Curse of the Lost Tomb will be returning at its usual location. Hopefully there'll be some changes in those mazes, because I remember Curse of the Lost Tomb, Trick or Treat Wood does not change, but Curse of the Lost Tomb last year had a a big change to the finale he's seen, as the uh, start usual scene was he took it, the statues came alive, but this time the statues did come alive, but the room started caving in, which was a lot better finale. Creepy Caves on Earth though, which is one of my favourite scare attractions last Halloween, it was such a good experience, such a detailed story, still a paid extra, but I absolutely loved it and it is worth paying for. And hopefully there is some changes in there. It was kind of a weak finale. She came into a room and said it was um, under lockdown. So maybe if they improve it, keep the story, keep the opening scene, keep the maze, but give it a better finale where you're running out will be a lot better finale. As that maze was really good, but it had a very, very weak finale. As some of the mazes I did not were not my favourite that did have really good finales. And that's why some of them are rated higher than this, like the Big Top, because it had such a good finale last year with the chainsaw ending. And that's what I think Creepy Caves would be even better if it had an even better finale. Alton Tower Scarefest have revealed their full lineup for 2018. Love the posters, it's all Wicker Man orientated, and I can't wait for Scarefest this year. It looks like one of the best Halloween events. Fright Nights haven't revealed their line up yet obviously as they'll probably wait until the middle of summer to release that but Alton Towers Scarefest a lot will be returning but there's quite a lot of new things this year that is really really good for the event it's having a bit of a big fresh up still called Scarefest obviously but firstly the mazes that are returning firstly the family maze House of Monsters located up in Forbidden Valley will be returning for its third season. That is a really good experience and fantastic that that's came back for another year. Also returning for its fourth year, subspecies, the End Games. That will be returning its usual location in the towers and in the shipping containers and uh, for 2018. Also for its third year, the Altonville Mine Tours, Uncover the Legend and the Skin Snatchers will also be returning in its same location up in the towers. Also returning this year, the Welcoming Bee Chosen, last year's new maze, will be returning in the Mutiny Bay Courtyard, but it's going to have some big changes for this year, as the Wicker Man Secrecy is now out, and I hopefully it's going to have some big changes to that attraction. Also, 
return it or not returning this year are the Freaky Four doing this show out at the end of Tower Street where they do their four shows, which are the, the um, Storytime, Ghoul School, Trick or Treat Party and the Fancy Dress Competition. This year, it won't just be Patch, Phil, Skelvin and Frankie. It will now become the Freaky Five with Gretel the Witch coming along. So... A big spruce up. They've been there since the beginning of Scarefest, and it's good another member has come. And there's probably going to be um, some references in the shows that a new member has come. Other shows in Big Fun Showtime and CBeebies, the Monster Ballroom Party will be the new Halloween show in Big Fun show, um, Showtime for this year. Last year we did have the Funsters Halloween show that I didn't watch. And I'm not a show person, as the CBeebies land shows are mainly orientated for toddlers. I've watched a few uh, in the main season. That's when I've had quite a lot of days up there and there's nothing else to do. And you just want to chill out when the rides are busy and watch a show. But I haven't watched any of the CBeebies land Halloween shows. But maybe I'll check out this one this year. And also, we don't... Um, Screamosphere has been launched where actors will be replaced in areas of the park. There will be some ghost pirates around Mutiny Bay, which I think is going to be very nice. Up in the towers, in the windows, around the Gothic ruins, there's going to be some ghosts. And down near Galactica, this is something that has no reference to Halloween at all, you'll have some Galactic Airways cabin crew members. What the hell has that got to do with Halloween? Not scary at all. The ghost pirates and the Gothic ruins are Halloween, but I don't see the point of cabin crew going around Galactica, it's just to get people up there, isn't it? So that's going to be interesting to see as a Halloween street theatre. Don't, we don't know if the Ops and Ancestors will be coming back this year. Hopefully they do come back, because that's a really nice dance show on Tower Street in the morning and over in Gloomy Wood in the afternoon, but we don't know if that will be returning. Also, brand new for this year, a new maze, Project 42. No details except the location is in Forbidden Valley. That's obviously got to be in the Nemesis Subterra site. It's got some work going on right now. The scaffolding, now looking at it, it's not going to be permanent. It is going to be a scare maze in the old Nemesis Subterra building. Is it going to use the drop towers? I don't think so. They're probably going to wall the drop towers off because why would there be a ride in a maze and it will make the queues ridiculous? So I reckon... The drop towers has been called off because they were having troubles. That's one of the reasons why Subterra did close, was they were having troubles. They'll probably either remove the drop towers or just corner them off for the maze. Not returning for this year. No scare zones will be returning for 2018. The freak show. The scare zones before have been amazing. We had the original Dark Apocalypse and Nox in Furnace. Then it's Dark Apocalypse and the Freak Show. And only last year we only had the Freak Show. The Freak Show is no longer returning. Also, quite a sad thing for this year's Scarefest is Terror the Towers, What Lies Within, will not be returning. The longest running maze at Alton Towers has been from the start of Scarefest and back when Alton Towers used to do Halloween Spooktacular. It is now retired, and as some people said, it's literally just been thrown in a skip outside the towers. So, is that something to do with the rumoured Alton Towers dungeons? We don't know, as that's probably the likely situation. Also, the prices, mainly the same as last year. House of Monsters is £6, the Welcome is £8, Single May Shot are £8, but there's also the £20 bundle, which gets you Ultimville Mind Tours, Subspecies, and the brand new for 2018, Project 42. Let's get into merchandise. Let's get into merchandise. I've got some other bits that I did get from Alton Towers at my last visit. Last week I did show you my Oblivion 20th birthday merch. This week I will show you some other bits. Next we have a pin to add to the classic ride pins. You have the Thunder Looper 1990 to 1996. Love the logo on there. They've been doing classic pins. I've got the black hole and the corkscrew and this one. They've now announced that two more classic pins that I'm really excited and I may order them when they go on the online shop, which is the flume pin and the beast. I do love these classic ride pins. A new resin now, Hex, the legend of the towers. Has finally got some merchandise in this amazing resin. I thought, am I going to get it? I thought, I am going to get it because Hex barely gets any merchandise. It has got a pin this year, but this is really nice. It's that tower, you've got the steps, the door, 
and just like the, the, the tree around the building that is a really nice resin it was either I had a decision between either this one or Rita but I thought this one because Hex doesn't get even barely any merchandise but it's got a very nice look but the Rita resin did look nice as well I'll probably pick it up on my next visit let's get out into Guest the Ride <laughs> Guest the Ride I will reveal last week's Guest the Ride that was Hex the Legend of the Towers one of the best themed rides in this country and crazy to think that's 18 years old open back in 2000 the millennium but hopefully they do some celebration for that ride's 20th birthday. I'd love to have a t-shirt that says Hex 20 on it. They'll probably wait till another birthday like Nemesis right on its 21st. If you did get that correct, you will get a shout-out in this week's shout-out section of the show. Let's get into this week's Guess the Ride. It is a roller coaster made by B&M. It opened back in 2002. It was a world's first when it opened. And for 2016, it has some enhancements that allowed a different part of technology to be used in the experience. If you know what that ride is, put it down in the comments down below and you'll get a shout-out in next week's shout-out section of the show. Let's get into shout-outs. Let's get into the shout-outs. First, we have the guest of ride shout-outs, which obviously was Hex, the Legend of the Towers. First, we have Louis IRL, well done, Theme Park Magic. Well done, and Jake Smythe. Well done. Next, we have a YouTube comment from Sloppy Vox. Thank you for commenting. Next, we have a new subscriber from Nick Knack. Thank you for subscribing. Next, we have our Twitters from Oh My Me TV, Park Boys, Theme Park Guide, Dominic Gardner, Courtney, Theme Park Badger, Avalanche Attractions UK, Aiden, Theme Park Station, Kim Nash, Photo Theme Park UK, and Craig Toy. Thank you for doing what you did on Twitter. We are now on 174 subscribers. Crazy thing, a couple of weeks ago we were on 170. I really do want to hit 200 subscribers before October, before this theme park season does end. Don't forget to comment down below, put your guest ride in, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!